everybody. Uh, this is the software that I showed you earlier and I'm going to show you how to download, install and use this app which is an Azure manager for Windows and it's also available in Linux and Android as far as I know but uh, this tutorial is going to be for Windows only though the steps are pretty much the same. Um, okay so the first thing you need to do obviously is download the software and for that what you want to do is go to Info, hit enter, and that's it. So at the time of this recording, the newest version was 2.27. So I'm going to go ahead and click here to download this version. Um, you can see there is uh, so many beautiful things around here. This app is download. I'm sorry, I'm going to click here to download the app 2.27 again. And it's going to take you to this page where it's telling you, hey, you know what, there is two versions of TPAS 27. There is the classic edition, which is actually TPAS 127, and the professional edition, which is uh, 2.27. Now, both of these versions are actually free, and the only difference is that the classic version uses this thing called GDI+. Plus which is already included with Windows XP or any newer version of Windows. But the professional edition actually uses uh, the .NET Framework 2.0 or newer, which is included with Vista or newer uh, operating systems of Windows. So I actually have Windows Vista, as you can see here. So I'm going to go ahead and download this version. So click here. Oh, one more note. Um, before I go ahead, um, there's also two versions of each version. Um, the first option that I give you is the installer version and the second one is the portable. Basically what this is, is that um, this portable version is just a zip file with everything you need to run the application on it. So if you're a pro user, you might just want to download this one, but since this is a tutorial for newbie users, uh, we're gonna use the installer version. So that's what I'm gonna download. I'm just gonna click here. Um, you're gonna see, you're, you'll see that it will start in two, one, go. All right, so I'm gonna download this to my desktop or whatever this thing downloads. Anyway, so I'm just waiting for it to finish. It's done, so I'm just gonna click here. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Yes, I do know what I'm doing, so I just run it. Uh, yes, I want to install it in English, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, blah, 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 next. Uh, yes, I agree to the terms of service, next. Uh, that directory seems good to me, so next. And yes, I want every one of these things, so yeah, next. Um, this option here associates TPAS with the KPDX file extension. It uh, makes these programs open these kind of files, which actually I think it's the only program in the world that uses this extension. So it's up to you whether or not you want to associate this application with this type of files. So I'm just gonna leave it on the default for now. I'm actually gonna close the browser now because we're not gonna use that for a while. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna create a new tab and leave it there. So back to the setup. Um, so next and install. I'm just gonna do lots of fancy things. Wait for a few seconds. Um, sit down, enjoy life. Things like this. So okay, it's done. Um, you can see here it says, "Are you? Uh, do you want to launch TPAS? Yes, please." So the first installation and. Uh, it's asking me if I want the application to check for updates automatically. I'm going to say yes, because it's the recommended option. If you don't want it to, you don't have to. It's up to you. So I'm just going to click enable here. Um, but it, the very first time you launch TPAS, you're going to see this thing, uh, which really doesn't um, tell you anything, what you can do, what you are supposed to do. Um, the magic begins when you actually create the first database file. So um, this database is going to be um, a collection of all of your logins, your usernames, your passwords, some additional information that you want to put there. And well, 
in order to save that information, you need to create a database. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna go to File, New, or you can just click Control N, or actually you can just click here and there is a new icon on the toolbar. So I'm gonna do that. And it's gonna ask me where I want to save this database file. Um, now, this is very, very, very important because the fate of all of your information depends on this database file. Every single one of your logins, your passwords, your uh, additional information is gonna be stored in this database file that you choose. If you lose this file, you're gonna lose everything. There is no way to recover it other than by using this file. So be sure to first know where you're saving this database file to make regular backup copies either to your cell phone or a USB drive or maybe even the web um, if you're not paranoid as I am. But uh, so for now, I'm just gonna create a database file for called um, secret information. How about secret logins? Yeah, I like that. All right, and I'm gonna save this to my documents right now again. Be sure you know where you're saving this. Um, just click save. And now it's gonna ask me for some weird stuff that just looks uh, terrifying when looking at it, but honestly, it's really not that much of a pain once you understand what it's asking for. Uh, this first field, the master password, um, it's gonna be used to encrypt this database file. In other words, uh, whatever you set here, it's gonna be the password used every single time you want to open this database password. So make sure that it's a very, very secure password, that it's a hard to guess password, and basically that you are following all of the rules for good passwords. Now, what is a good password? I actually already wrote it here, so just to make it easier for me. Um, a good password contains both uppercase and lowercase letters. That is, for example, you want to say hello with uppercase H and not um, hello all lowercase. Also, you notice that this little bar here changes every time I type something. This bar is telling you how strong is your current password. So you want to get it as close as full as possible. Um, Anyways, back to passwords. Uh, a good password has numbers on it. So instead of just saying hello, you can say hello you two over there. And a good password also has special characters on it. Um, this can be anything like, for example, uh, spaces like I did here, or you can use things like commas, exclamation points, or maybe uh, parentheses. Who knows? Something like that. And last but not least, a good password has more than 10 characters. Forget about eight. Uh, right now, the standard is 10, and rest assured that this number is gonna keep, keep going up and up as computing power progresses. But for now, longer than, this, than 10 characters is good enough. So um, I'm gonna create my master password something that nobody can guess. Oh, by the way, there is also uh, tips for creating bad passwords if you want to. Uh, a bad password is one that is easy to guess. For example, if you have um, two children, you say, I have two children. I don't know. Um, maybe it's Even though this is a very long password, and you can see here, it says that it's very secure, it's really a bad password because all of these are very common words, and if your children are actually called John and Mary, uh, a lot of people are going to try to guess this. Um, so you really don't want to use this as a password. Also, bad passwords are short. Remember how I was just typing hello? Well, that's a really bad password. You can tell that here. And, uh, well, I already mentioned that basic, uh, that bad passwords use only basic, very well-known words, like, for example, only words that are found in a dictionary. 
try using words that nobody knows about. If you speak a foreign language or any other language, try mixing them. Like, for example, hola. And of course, a bad password is something that is either really hard to remember or really hard to type to you because remember, you're going to be typing this password every single time you try to open your database. So it better be something that you can type really fast and that is not going to slow you down and that you're not going to get annoyed to typing every single time. Um, in this case, I'm going to go for something simple like uh, something simple yet hard to guess. Oh, I'm too... good uh, if you click on this icon here it's gonna hide your password so of course you don't want anybody looking at you uh, when you're typing this so I'm just gonna try to remember this right now oh my god what is crazy stupid password mm, you may be wondering why am I saying this even though it's only one password well this is just to try to make it harder to guess and again easier to remain to remember it um, it doesn't make any sense to anybody, but it does make sense to me because I know I'm just trying to deceive you from thinking that, that I hate passwords or this password that I'm typing. I don't know. It just makes no sense and I don't want it to make any sense. So I'm just going to erase this here and I'm going to type it again just to make sure that I can type it every single time. There you go. Uh, it's fairly secure. Okay, so uh, these two options are a little more advanced. I probably do not recommend using this last one. Uh, you can read the warning here, but uh, in short, don't use this one. Um, this one, I'll talk about this later if I have more time. Uh, suffice to say, this is uh, just additional security, and you can play with it if you want. Um, let's not use that for now. So, OMG, I hate these two passwords. That's my password. Okay, now it's going to ask me for a few options for this database. Uh, you really don't need to fill any of them other than this one. I totally recommend coming here and at least clicking this one second delay button. Uh, what this does is increment this nice little number that you see here. It may not seem important to you. Um, the non-technical explanation is uh, the higher this number, the harder it is for a computer to do a brute force attack on your database. Um, I'm not going to go into technical details, but you want to make this number as high as possible, but not so high because it's also going to make loading and saving your database a lot uh, slower. So again, the higher the number, the slower it's going to be to save or load your database. So just one second delay is good enough. Um, for the rest of the options, that's just the case. Just leave it like that. You may want to give your database a name. For example, I'm going to call this my data and maybe a description. Um, is this database tool for loading information because I feel like it. Good. So just click OK and you're all set. Now you have created your first database. Um, you can see it has already two entries here. This is just a sample entry. Now, if you're an expert user who can learn by just looking at, you can um, go ahead and double click either of this and you'll, um, you'll basically know how to use your tool in no time. So again, this is a tutorial for non-technical users. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this. And we're going to create our first entry in a few seconds. Um, but before that, let me show you what's the actual purpose of this two path tool. Um, suppose you are about to create a new account. Let's say I'm going to log into gmail.com, but I don't have an account. So I'm just going to create a new one by clicking this button here. Uh, it's asking for my name. I'm just going to call this John Doe and the password is going to be, I don't know, just for now, my 
this is from Ashley said that one before. Now it's asking me for my password here. I could just try and make myself uh, an awesome password that's easy for me to remember and probably easy for computers to guess. But you know what? I have this awesome tool called KeyPass and I'm gonna use this one to create a password for me, which is gonna be really hard to guess and really hard to brute force you. I'm gonna show you how to do that. You can just create right click here and click add entry or you can just click this other button here that says add entry or I believe there is also an add entry here. Nope, there's not. Um, so either way, um, your choice or you can also press control I. So again, your choice. Um, this is gonna open this window to create a new entry. Every entry has a title. Now this title is actually very important because it's gonna be used for auto type. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a few seconds, but uh, in this case, I'm gonna call it Gmail. And my username, uh, this is the actual username that I'm giving um, the website here. So I'm just gonna copy paste this, copy the back here and paste. Now it's asking me for a password and here's where the magic actually happens. If you click again, this show high password uh, icon, you're gonna see uh, this is some random garbage. This is key passes suggestion to use for a password for this particular site. Now you don't have to use this. Key pass comes with an awesome password generator. All you have to do is click in this icon and go to open password generator and voila, oh my, this is so beautiful. Um, here in this screen, you can tell KeePass, how do you want it to generate this password? You want it to have uppercase letters, lowercase letters, digits, uh, the minus sign, the underscore sign, white space, special characters, and other special characters, and even this high NC characters. Now, in my experience, um, these high NC characters causes many, many sites to break and stop working. So I do not recommend using this option unless you know what you're doing. Um, additionally, you can tell uh, KeePass how long you want your password to be. So I'm, for now, I'm just gonna say 20 character. I'm gonna click OK. And you can see that the password has changed according to those rules that I gave it. Um, Again, I can just go back here, open password generator, mark all those options again, click OK again, and it's gonna generate a different password. And I don't know, if I, I, if I am feeling paranoid today, I can just go ahead and say, you know what, I want a password that's um, 64 ch characters long. And click OK, and you'll see that's gonna generate a password that's that long. Now, you don't have to remember this password. All you have to do is, if you're happy with this result, is just click OK, and here's your new entry. Well, this is for Gmail, and this is your username at Gmail, and your password, of course, is not shown. So what do you do with once you have all of this? So you just right click and select copy password, or you can just press Control T as you see here. Now, when I do this, notice down here that this bar starts to be pleasant. So if I go to notepad right now and press control V to paste, you'll see that it's pasting my password. But once this bar is gone, which it's gone now, if I try to press control V again, your password will no longer be in your clipboard. So it's only gonna give you about 12 seconds to copy and paste this password in whichever field you are going to use it. So I'm gonna show you another um, another option for password generation. Again, open the password generator. Uh, in addition to all these nice little options, oh, very important, not every site supports every single one of these characters, especially these special and bracket characters are uh, not accepted by many sites as um, a character for a password. So if something is failing for you, just be sure to uncheck those. Um, anyway, there's another option down here that says collect additional entry key. If you hit this one and click OK, you're gonna be shown with this um, fancy window that looks so weird. So 
but what it's telling you is that it's going to generate a random password using the information that you give it here. Again, you don't have to remember any of this information, it's just used for random number generation. So um, one thing you have to do is move the mouse around this uh, grayish area. You will notice down here that as I move the mouse, um, this bar starts to fill up. That's how many bits it has collected from your mouse movement. So in other words, Every time you move your mouse, it's generating a random number based on the information that's below the mouse. It's also asking you to type some random characters here. So what I usually do is go to whatever I have in hand, like for example, I'm just going to do and say whatever book, and I don't know, just copy this. Control C, go back to keypad, Control D. Again, it can be anything. You can fill it with just random crap if you feel like it, if you, you can use whatever. Uh, it's just random information for random number generation. You don't have to remember any of this. So I'm gonna click okay here. Here as you see now the password is, um, has not been shown. I don't need to see the password. I'm gonna show you. I'm just gonna click okay. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna hit, uh, select this uh, first entry, hit control C go back to Gmail and just hit Control D twice and that's gonna be my password and I'm, I'm, I'm done here so I'm gonna prove that I'm not human I am Devin C and I agree to the terms of service go to the next step uh, I gotta remember passwords here in Firefox thank you very much um, well you can't leave your birthday on gonna give some random information here year one whatever 1980s because the 80s were awesome I am something else so no again my password is no longer in my clipboard that's not a problem I can just go back to keypad and uh, select the entry control C control D and control D and let's try it again Honestly, can't do it with English. So let's try again. Choose Wi-Fi. Huh. Huh. There you go. Two five five. Nope. Awesome. Uh, do I want to create my profile? No, thank you. Now my account has been created, so I'm just gonna go to gmail.com. And hopefully, it's gonna load very fast. Actually, I made a mistake right there, so before doing this, I actually have one or two timeouts, and I'm going to go back here to sign in and um, do some of the awesome magic. I could, I could just go back here and say, you know, control C, control D, but um, keypads actually better feature I'm just going to get rid of this whoa what's going on I'm just has a much better feature called auto type if you see here um, actually it's not shown here oh yeah it's not shown here but don't worry so all I have to do actually is just um, select the username my text box and hit alt control a and it's gonna type my username and password for me. I didn't even have to do anything and I'm done. It's really, really that simple. Now, you notice that when I signed out a few minutes ago, it was it actually remembered my username and all it was asking for was my password. Well, um, Keypad actually knows about this. So I'm gonna back, go back here to this first option and double click on it to edit it and go to the auto type um, tab so you notice here it says inherit from auto type settings blah 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 what you want to do in cases like this is override it and you'll see um, this information here says username path password enter this is what keypad is actually doing when you press ctrl alt a uh, it's typing your username then it's pressing the tab key then it's typing your password and it's pressing the enter key. That's what you saw a few minutes ago when I just pressed Control A, Control Alt A. It typed my username and then it suddenly jumped to the next um, text 
feel that's because it uh, it just pressed tab for you. So if you press tab on your browser, you'll notice that this little um, focus indicator changes from one place to another. So what you want to do in cases like this, where you know that your username is already going to be there, is just um, edit this text. So you get rid of your username and the tab key so that it presses, uh, sorry, so that it types this password and hits enter. And that's it. Press OK. I'm going to hit Control Alt A again. I'm going to type in the password and it's going to sign me in. Awesome, huh? Oh, I got two emails already. And that's about it. Again, for every site that you know of, take your time to, I love this site because I'm a shopaholic. I want to create a new account here. Mm, I don't have an account. Yeah, I'm a new customer, of course. And if John Doe, my email address, oh gee, I don't remember what my email address is. Well, I'm just gonna go back here and I know that I have an email at Gmail, so I'm gonna copy the username, but you know what? I don't feel like editing this every time I want to type my username. So what I'm gonna do is hit, um, sorry, press the right uh, mouse button and you see there is this option that says copy username or control D. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna hit control D and control C to paste. And I know that this is at Gmail, so I'm gonna type push that. And, oh, it's asking me to type it again. Uh, I'll do it again, no problem. And my mobile phone is optional, so I'm not gonna give it here. And it's asking me for a new password, so I'm not gonna give it this same password that I already have here because that will be unsafe. What I'm gonna do instead is just create a new entry and I'm gonna call this amazon.com and for my username, in this case, your username, I'm, I know that my username is gonna be my whole email address, so I'm gonna copy this and paste it here. There you go. And I'm gonna use again the random password generator. I'm gonna tell it, you know what, I want password to have all these characters. I don't want special characters because I'm not sure if Amazon supports those, but I'm paranoid and I want my password to be, I don't know, maybe 70 characters long. Is that good for you? By the way, there is this preview tab. If you click here, it's gonna generate you lots and lots of passwords based on these rules that you gave it. So again, I want to collect additional entropy and I'm just gonna drag the mouse down and have some fun with it. And I'm gonna look for some random text. Maybe this text is good or not, who knows? Remember that in your world, anything is possible. So I'm just gonna delete a few of these spaces because why not? Again, this can be anything. The more random it is, the better. Anyway, so that's okay. I just hit okay and that's it. I have a password for Amazon that I have not even seen and I'm just gonna copy this and paste it here twice, create an account and I'm done. Awesome, huh? Um, and that's about it. That's all you do. It's just every time you go to a new site or, or an existing site and you want to change your password, you just come here, open the password generator, give it a few rules that you know your, your site supports and that's it. And you just copy that password, paste it on the password field and you're set. Another interesting feature that I want to mention before I go is each one of these entries supports additional information. Like for example, um, for Amazon, I would like to say, I don't know, my credit card. Actually, this will be more suitable for like your bank account password, but just to give you an idea, then you enter your credit card number here. Of course, this is not my credit card, I swear to you. And that's it, this information is gonna be stored in your database. Now, one Im very, very important step that I have not performed yet is save. Your password, your password information, your login information, everything we've done so far is not saved until you click here on save. Of course, you can also go to file and select save. And if at this time you go to your, um, hold on, if at this time you go to 
to your computer, you can go to your documents, is you give your uh, database file. And again, if I try to open this file in a plain text editor, it's not gonna let me because this file is actually encrypted. So I just hit that, no problem. You see, nobody will ever be able to read your information unless they have your password. Again, if you lose this password, or if you lose this file, all your information stored in this database file is gone with it. All information is in this particular file, so make sure to have a backup in a different computer, in your cell phone, in whatever you trust the most, um, because you're gonna lose it someday. Something is gonna happen. Maybe your cousin is gonna come and just press the space bar and hit the delete key and say, yeah, I want to delete you. Or who knows, maybe your, comp your hard drive will explode or maybe who knows, a million things can happen and rest assured, if you say, no, that's not gonna happen to me, it is gonna happen to you. So yeah, that's about it. Um, one last thing for added security. Remember that at the beginning I mentioned that this key file provider option makes things better for you. Um, by the way, I already forgot my password here. Oh my Jesus. Okay. Secure password. All right. Um, this key file or provider, whatever. Um, this is an additional feature for security. You can basically pick up any file that you know of, say for example, I have music here. Yeah, I have sample music here. I could pick any of these files and those will be used to encrypt your final database file. So it will use both your master password and this key file to encrypt your file, incrementing the, um, how do I say this? Making it a lot harder to just try to guess your, your password. So. Imagine that somebody you thought it was your friend gets a hold of your master password and also gets a hold of your database file of um, this file over here. If you are using a provider file or a key file or whatever this file is called, they will not be able to open your database because they also need this additional file that you're using to encrypt your database. Now. If you don't have this file either, you won't be able to open your database, okay? So it's very, very important that you use this, um, that you keep a backup of, the, of this file along with a backup of your database. And it's also very, very important that this file that you're selecting here is never ever changed because if you change even a single character, that's gonna make it a different file and that's gonna cause that this, uh, provider file is not the one that you use for encrypting your database and hence you won't be able to actually open your database. I'm gonna show you a very quick example. Um, I'm just gonna type notepad here. I'm gonna type that this is my key file. Seriously, that's all you need. I'm gonna type it as one.txt file and I'm gonna change my options here key I'm gonna use a shorter key just for demonstration I'm just gonna use the worst possible password ever one two three four five six do not use this password okay this is just for demonstration purposes and I'm gonna select a key file that's gonna be this one.txt I'm gonna hit ok and settings have been changed that's good and I'm gonna hit save so now I'm gonna close this database and try to open it again. And it's asking for my master password. Notice that it already knows where my key file is. So it's telling me, hey, I, you want to use this, right? Yes, I do. So I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna type my password. And voila, it's open. So let me show you what happens when the file is not correct. So I'm gonna try to open that same database again. Just type the file. And I'm gonna give it a completely wrong file just for the sake of it. I'm gonna give it another key file and 
in a tough way. Okay. He's going to say, you know what? I can't open this database using that information that you provided. So again, the key file is, is very important. I'm going to show you one last thing. I'm going to change this, I don't know, uh, this I for an uppercase I. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to save. I'm going to try to open this again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And again, it tells me, you know what? I cannot open this file because either it's an SRT or the file are invalid. So again, the file must be the exact same every time you want to open the database. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And that's about it. Whew. That was a little bit longer than I expected, but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a thing or two here. Um, again, if you have any questions, just uh, post them on the bottom of this video, I guess, and enjoy. <laughs>